Hello viewers, I am KC Janardhan and I am a calligrapher and a handwriting researcher trainer by profession. Well, you must be wondering why I got into a profession called handwriting and calligraphy. I'll go back 25 to 30 years when I just got out of college. I tried my hand at various businesses and found that I never got the satisfaction that I wanted at the end of the day. I said, I'm going to be different. Let me do something which I like to do and love to do. And from those days, I started doing some kind of painting, sculpting and these kind of models. Later, when I wanted to get into a career, that's when all these thoughts came back and said, do what you like, do what you love. When most of my friends and their uh, relatives used to be complaining about their children's handwriting not being good, then I thought, this is an area which needs to be addressed. Let's take a look at what's happening with handwriting, why people are writing badly, and if I can help them. And that's how I got into it. And then I started practicing handwriting to go to lettering and then to the highest form for, called calligraphy, which has a spiritual dimension, and tried to make it into a viable proposition, a business. Well, what happened is uh, I looked at a hobby first, which later became an occupation, which became a vocation and then a profession. I think that's how one has to try and pick up what is natural to somebody. I'm reminded of uh, Cicero's quote. Cicero said, uh, natural ability without education has risen a man to glory and virtue than education without natural ability. Taking up what you like to do and love to do has its own challenges. First and foremost thing is that your parents and your relatives will not approve of what you want to do. The rest of the world actually wrote me off and said, uh, well, you're not going to make any headway and the whole world is going towards digital gadgets and digitization. With all the gadgetry, you still have to write because that's the personal touch that is missing in this impersonal world. So I undertook this journey 25 years ago and it's been very pleasurable when I started uh, doing calligraphy for various clients in Bangalore. It started growing from a few ad agencies to corporates and I reached almost 220 plus across the globe. Pleasurable because you enjoy what you're doing, the dance of the letters and it is so relaxing. And then I went on to teach handwriting, did my own research work, why people write badly. From 93, I started traveling the world. Everything was sponsored. It took me across the globe, except South America and South Africa. I've traveled to every part of the world. It's just because of handwriting. I'm glad to tell you, I was selected by the Rotary International in 2001 as a group study exchange ambassadorial scholar to go to UK. Well, my joy was doubled because if I had gone to any other country, I wouldn't have got the best of what I wanted in this field of handwriting and calligraphy. It gave me the confidence and it allowed me to teach in the schools in Britain, interact with parents, teachers, head teachers and inspectors of school, teach them in, the, in, in, in that country about handwriting. When I showed them the samples, they were very excited and said, well, we haven't gone to those kind of levels that you have reached. And they said, could you please help us? Could you teach? Well, I think that was the highest level of recognition or qualification that I have ever received because if the Brit says can you teach us I think that was the best and when I got back I'm glad to say media helped me a lot media started writing and there are two articles which are very dear to my heart the first one was written in Deccan Herald which said Desi Ustad teaches English tones and the next article was in the Times of India which said this Indian taught the English how to write well that's the power of handwriting I was given a membership in the Association of British Scholars and today I head that as the president. Two years ago, I was also asked to form the British Business Group by the British Deputy High Commission in Bangalore. I'm the founding secretary. We are trying to promote business between Karnataka as well as UK and vice versa to bring in investments or to take investments from here and build partnerships. Well. My dream, 
another dream was to get to the parliament and that was fulfilled when I was invited by the MP of the Labour Party, Mr. Sharma, Virendra Sharma, to address the business meet at the House of Commons that was last year. It was done under the heading of British South India Council of Commerce. After my presentation, I also got a lot of fans in England and I was appointed as the Vice Chair for Karnataka to develop business between both the places as well as conduct meets at the House of Commons. I have done three of them till now. And one of my fans there said, tell me what I can do for you. I'm impressed by the way you speak, by the way you write. And I asked him, could I register a company here for handwriting? And uh, it was surprising and it was a pleasant surprise that he was a chartered accountant as well as a company secretary. And he registered the first limited company for handwriting and calligraphy by an Indian in London last year. Well, it's been a long journey. I've enjoyed every bit of it. And uh, it's time for me to share all these things with people. So I started writing books. I'm in the process of finishing a few books on handwriting and my own biography and a few interesting books that I'm bringing out. So that led me to form a publishing company just to publish my books. So this is how I have uh, gone across from one to the other. It's handwriting that took me places. It's the ability to speak that took me to teach. And it's the ability to interact with people which took me across to various places of the world. To go back, it is the Italians who ruled uh, Britain for almost 500 years. They gave them the handwriting in English, the ABCD. So italics is the original form of writing which has to be followed. Unfortunately, today we follow cursive writing, which I would call it as cursed writing. There's a lot of ambiguity that creeps in. Clarity is lost out. So if you follow italics, there is a particular way in which you can construct the letters and you know the parts of a letter and you're able to do justice to the handwriting and clarity. Art of writing is clarity of expression, clarity of thought. So writing is a visual medium in which you pen down your thoughts and you convey it to people. Handwriting is a visual expression of speech and a means by which you deliberately set down messages that you want to communicate. That is the most apt definition of handwriting. Handwriting is the dance of the pen on paper as said by Alfred Fairbanks who actually founded the Society of Italic Handwriting in 1952 in London. It's truly a dance of the pen on paper. Writing with a fountain pen is something that one must experience in their lives. Handwriting is something which can give you a lot of confidence. And handwriting can do a lot of things to you besides getting you attention and marks in your school days. Let me share with you some of these experiences that I've had across the globe. When people said, what can you do with handwriting? My handwriting got noticed, calligraphy got noticed, and there were a lot of people who were appreciating. Uh, writing can be done today by various means, but when you use your fingers and hand and write, you call it handwriting. When you ask this question, it's interesting. There are people who have lost their hands in an accident. So there's somebody who tries to even write with their toes. And there's somebody who's been trying to write with their mouth, holding the pen. So the hand comes into play, which is your fingers and your palm and your wrist. That is handwriting. And then, uh, interesting, uh, when somebody writes on a paper or a book, it's handwriting. But then many people say, look at the handwriting on the board. I'd like to clarify saying that when you write on a board, your hand does not come into play. It starts from your elbow. It's your elbow writing that happens on a board in the classroom. In the Esther years, we had these uh, hoardings and signboards, which used to be hand painted. And I've heard a lot of people saying, look at the way he is uh, handwriting uh, on the board. Then I told them on the board, he is sitting on a plank suspended from a rope and he is using his whole arm to actually fill in those letters or whatever he's painting. So that was arm writing. So let's be clear. Good you asked the question. I'm happy. Handwriting is just with your hand and then on the board it is elbow writing and on the huge hoardings when somebody paints 
it is generated from their shoulders handwriting is personal it allows you to pen your thoughts and uh, if you want to express yourself clearly i think you should write recent times i've had various discussions with uh, creative people who have been writing novels as well as certain journalists and a very interesting aspect came out they said you see when we write by hand we make a draft when we have written down or penned down our thoughts we want to change or we want to improve upon it then again we write below that then we strike off a few things we just strike off then we are writing a third version and after you've written your third version you want to refer to the first and second version and you think you can make a mix and match but unfortunately when you're doing that on your laptop or a computer you have typed in something when you make a change you delete what you have already done and you've lost out that so you can't refer so when you write by hand you have recorded it for posterity and you can refer make changes and bring out the best i think that's what is being lost out on the digital medium so you should write by hand you have a connect to it your mind is thinking your heart is feeling and your hand is actually translating it into writing there is an emotional connect there the word calligraphy comes from the greek language which says kalos graphein kalos means beautiful graphein means to write and just that beautiful writing does not mean calligraphy to take your handwriting to lettering and to the levels of calligraphy there are few rules and regulations first and foremost thing is there are definitely mathematically based calculations about the body height body width corresponding length of ascenders and descenders and all these calculations have to be done which typography would explain in detail there are families there are almost 400 different styles in which you could write and those families have a capital and a lower case punctuations and numbers you need to master them you need to also master the pens inks quills nibs or chisels to be used on wood or to do some engraving on glass various tools required to create this and then comes after this mastery the person who's doing it has to be in an audio visual vacuum as though everything is lost out from this world when you're dipping the nib into the ink pot you are collecting your thoughts and your thoughts are held there i think many people have a problem to hold their thoughts many people say my thoughts are fleeting before i transfer it to writing it's gone but when you go to calligraphy your thoughts are held and you know what word comes in next and which pattern you're going to write or which style you're going to use all that is held then after dipping the nib and draining off the excess ink you breathe in when you want to write the upward stroke you breathe out when you want to write the downward stroke there is a synchrony that happens between your breathing and your writing your mind is seeing what you're writing your heart again is feeling what you're writing and you need to be in a proper frame of mind where you're enjoying yourself so that all those good feelings within you are transported into your writing through your hands now what is being said by calligraphers who have experienced calligraphy is the ink flows like your blood through your veins comes to the tip of your fingers and the letters are produced there is rhythm there is harmony when you get into calligraphy there is absolutely no stress there is absolutely no disturbance you are alone in your world and you are enjoying what you're doing it's very pleasurable the feel of that pen in your hands when you dip and then when you start writing the smooth way in which it moves you know it's uh, you know it's sensory organs which are being stimulated highest level of spirituality is about energy fields the whole world is made up of positive and negative energy so you are in positive mind frame you are in your positive thinking so you are feeling nice whenever you think positive whenever you feel positive that makes you feel very nice all negative thoughts are out of it and that positive feeling within you is transported to your writing now that energy transfer happens and that's when it becomes true calligraphy that is the enjoyment which i think many uh, spiritual masters have been talking about the ultimate enjoyment 
when you uh, get into some kind of a state of mind, they say. I'm not a spiritual guy to go into details of what they call as alpha or beta state. But then I've gone to a state where it is the fountain of enjoyment. Going back to the late 80s, where my handwriting was recognized very well was an incident that took place in the Indian Airlines booking office. I had gone across to book a ticket and fill the form and the person who was sitting across the table looked at it and said, could you fill another form? I said, why? She said, it's so nice to see somebody write beautifully. And the word spread and her colleagues came around and they said, oh, that's very interesting. What do you do? I said, I write for a living. And then they said, could you write some greeting cards for us? Could you write something in a book? We want to present somebody and that's how it all started and ever since until the private airlines came i would get a ticket in indian airlines even if the plane was full i was issued a ticket from the mp quota and that made me feel very special and when i had to get a passport in 1993 people said it was so difficult to get a passport without somebody's influence you need an influence of an mp or an mla but I tried to use my own handwriting influence and it worked better than any one. I gave a handwritten application to the passport authority that I wanted a passport which I would like to write myself. The officer who was sitting there who received my form, he looked into it and said, uh, so you want to write your own uh, passport? Could you please write my name? I want to see how you write my name. I remember his name. His name was Robin. And I wrote his name, Robin, in two, three different styles. And he said, please come inside, I'll meet you. And then he took me to the passport officer. And after about 15 days when the passport books arrived, I was called to write my own passport. I am very happy to say that even today, it remains the only passport to be written by the owner in this country. Later, I went on to also write the birth certificate of my daughter, as well as the death certificate of my father. Emotional things in your life recorded and handwriting came in. So I coined the term, the power of handwriting. Handwriting has got your personal power which can work wonders for you. And handwriting today could be a relaxant. Everybody is stressed out and they say, I'm running up from one place to another. I get up early in the morning, I'm on road for an hour, then I have to go to work. I don't know what timings I go and come back, I'm so stressed. This word called stress was not known that well, I think, 25, 30 years ago. Today, if you sit down and if you relax and write with a fountain pen, I think it relieves your stress much better. So I tried out interdisciplinary researchers to try and see how I can relax people with handwriting. There are seven elements that I found quite common and a common string which unites all art forms. The common string that unites all art forms is called as composition. You compose music, you compose a dance, you compose a painting, you compose a sculpture. So composition is important. And se number seven was interesting. When you compose music in the Indian scenario, you have the sa, ri, ga, ma, fa, da, ni, the seven notes. And in the Western classical, you have the do, re, mi, la, so, T. You pass the sun's rays through a prism and you get seven colors. The days of the week are seven. And so, for italic writing, we have seven strokes with which you can build every letter in the English alphabet. One thing is that uh, parents should not force children to write before they are ready to write. Good that you asked me this question. Today what's happening is a two-year-old is asked to write in a play home when they're not ready biologically. Because when you study the child development, you understand that the fine motor skills need to be developed for writing. By the time the child is five and a half, that's when the fine motor skills are developed. Before the fine motor skills are developed, you give them a chalk or a crayon or a pen and ask them to write, the child is not able to hold the instrument properly, gets a wrong pen hold, that is not corrected and that gives the pain in the fingers 
and then the trauma happens in your hand and transfers to your forearm, your shoulders and your head, your neck. And so the child doesn't want to write. And then the methodology of introducing a child to writing is also not right. We did a research in England as well as in Germany and Switzerland where we found that children who were introduced to writing before five and a half had a lot of problems. They were resisting handwriting. They said we hated handwriting when they were about nine and a half or ten. But we also took a group of children who were seven, six, five and a half, six plus and seven and taught them the same thing. By the time they were 11 or 12, they enjoyed writing and there were no complaints. So we are trying to do something against nature which should be stopped. I think we are products of nature, so we should go ahead along with natural development and introduce things at the right age. I think the old adage says, there is an age to do certain things. I think that is right. We are forgetting that. In this world of competition, your first impression creates the best impression and your last impression should leave a lasting impression and handwriting can fulfill that completely. The moment they see you write well is the first impression and they never forget it for a lifetime. That is leaving a lasting impression. I would also appeal to all teachers, please learn how to write well. As I had said, a thing of beauty is joy forever. You will find how your students are attracted towards you, attracted towards your handwriting and they would also try to emulate your handwriting. That's how it has to be passed on from generation to generation. Let me appeal to all the youngsters, please do, don't look for shortcut. Any kind of shortcut will short, short circuit your uh, career. Please spend enough time, master what you have within yourself. Even if the rest of the world says, don't do this, don't do that. If you have that kind of a hunch within you, if you feel that you can make it big, please go ahead and do it. And I will tell you that you will find your own way. And as somebody said, if you have something good to do in this world, I think the whole world, the heavens, the cosmic powers will all get together to conspire to help you. That will happen and it has happened with me. For you to fit into the change, changing scenarios, what you need to do is, I am remembered of a quote which says, you need to know something of everything and everything of earthing. That's when you will be able to make a mark for yourself. If you have read history, have you come across any history writing about the money that somebody has amassed in their lives? No. People only talk about what they did to improve upon themselves, how they were able to repay or how they were able to give it back to the society. Now that's what you should look at. Forget about money. Do what you love, money will follow. But money is not everything. At the end of it, you'll have to be happy and contented. Well, let me try to end this by saying, discover the power of your fingers. The stroke of the pen and the power of the tongue will always rule supreme. And any other ability that you possess naturally will take you to the heights and the greatest heights. If people don't see it, I would like to say that if you can visualize the invisible, you will accomplish the impossible. Thank you.